The Earth's climate is undergoing change. It's a fact we are beyond doubt or discussion. It's the rate of change that causes worry. One major driver of the world's climate is changing faster than ever predicted. The snow, the ice, the ocean, the land, rivers, glaciers and atmosphere in the Arctic areas, in total the Arctic cryosphere. Changes of the cryosphere are occurring faster than formerly predicted by scientists. They are more widespread and some seem to be speeding up while interacting with each other. Due to human activities, we are witnessing a cryosphere rapidly moving towards a new balance. This change will have overwhelming consequences in the Arctic region and will, in time, have significant impact on living conditions for all humans on Earth. The melting of the ice from the mountain glaciers and ice caps and the big ice sheets in Antarctica and Greenland are causing enormous problems and we see that the sea level is rising more and more. There's a lot of people that are challenged by this sea level rise. We can mention the, the, the Pacific Islands, the uh, Netherlands, uh, Bangladesh. And uh, as the sea level will continue to rise, it will be a huge challenge to adapt to these changes. We've seen dramatic changes in the snow cover in the last 20 years. And that means that there is a, a feedback effect from a high albedo where the surface is actually cooling. Uh, the atmosphere because the radiation coming in from the sun is bounced back into space again and as the snow starts to decrease both in duration and in extent then you have a very big change in albedo and more radiation is absorbed by the surface and that makes the surface warmer. The Arctic seas are warming accumulating more and more of the sun's energy. This is a feedback mechanism as the ocean is connected to the rest of the Arctic environment, as the heat absorbed by the ocean is spread throughout the Arctic environment and that warms the Arctic and speeds up changes in the Arctic. The ongoing and projected uh, thawing of permafrost have actually the potential to affect the whole global climate system as we have such a large amount of carbon store that can be emitted as greenhouse gases into the atmosphere that will then enhance the greenhouse effect. Models are, are consistent with what we're seeing. They're, they're showing that the, the changes that are occurring are the result of feedbacks. These are interactions between different parts of the system. These feedbacks can lead to rapid and sudden changes, changes that we may not have anticipated at particular points in time. We're seeing these changes occurring already, just where they will lead is not clear at this point. Since 2005, when the Arctic Climate Impact Assessment Report was released, more than 200 leading scientists have been working on a deeper understanding of the Arctic system and better estimates of the changes. The result is the Sweeper Report. The report reveals new knowledge in a series of fields. The lower Arctic atmosphere and oceans are heating up, causing the sea ice cover to be reduced in area, time span and thickness. The temperature is the highest observed in at least 2,000 years. The snow cover and land-based ice are decreasing and observations from space tell us that the reflectivity will continue to decrease as much as 20% by year 2050. The sea level is rising at its fastest rate in the last 11,000 years, and as glaciers melt, this rise will continue for centuries.
and thawing of permafrost means that the Arctic is predicted to become a substantial producer of greenhouse gases. We're now entering unknown territory. The Arctic's climate has been relatively stable for the past five to 10,000 years. There are signs now that we're moving out of that range of stability. The models are consistent with the observational data. This has implications for the climate of Europe. A warmer Arctic could mean a colder Europe. That's one example of how the Arctic may influence other parts of the, of, of the world. The cryosphere is the world's cooling mechanism as heat from the equator is transported to the icy poles, keeping the temperature in the highly populated areas stable and fit for humans. The cooling mechanism depends on a balance between the liquid and solid phases, ice and water. While ice reflects most of the sun's energy, water absorbs energy. This means that the Arctic cryosphere is extremely sensitive to any temperature change. Only a few degrees and a few days of seasonal change have a large impact. The estimate is now that air temperature will increase somewhere between 3 and 7 degrees Celsius by year 2100. So what has happened, what has changed? The sun is the source of almost all energy on Earth. The sun's energy is either reflected or absorbed, known as the albedo effect. And since we've changed the composition of the atmosphere by releasing more greenhouse gases, more energy has been captured inside the Earth's atmosphere, causing the lower layers to heat up. This warming is pushing areas of the Arctic from solid phase to liquid phase, from reflecting energy to absorbing energy. If you look at the recent dynamics of our snow duration data, you can see that there's been an accelerating loss of snow in the last 20 years. And to get that acceleration, it usually involves a feedback. So the area warms, the snow goes, the albedo is reduced, and the warming gets more. And that is exactly what the researchers behind the Sweeper report have observed. Snow cover, ice sheets and glaciers, permafrost and river and lake and sea ice are all changing towards further melting. The sea ice plays an extremely important role as a stabilizer of the Arctic cryosphere. The summer sea ice has been reduced substantially since measuring began in 1978. The sun is now heating up the Arctic oceans, which again are heating up the lower atmosphere, extending the Arctic summer and thereby increasing melting processes from the Greenland ice sheet to Arctic river systems. This is the first clear evidence of a major climate feedback in action. Um, we see the warming temperatures are causing the ice to melt. When the ice melts, we have the ocean absorbing more energy, and that heats up and heats the atmosphere, which then melts more ice. So we get this feedback loop where the initial change is being amplified by the loss of the Arctic sea ice. So it's, it's a major climate change that's, that's happening very quickly. These feedback mechanisms are identified in a series of fields from the oceans to the ice sheets. Some are offsetting the warming, but the largest feedbacks in number and impact will further amplify the warming in the Arctic. In the case of the sea ice, the warming of the oceans has consequences over land. The heating of the Arctic inland leads to earlier melting of snow and ice on land in spring and summer and to a warming of the permanently frozen ground called permafrost. Permafrost is the slowest reacting part of the cryosphere, but it is warming and beginning to thaw. And the status is that more than 800,000 square kilometers of Arctic tundra is affected with a rise in temperature of up to 2 degrees. 
Even though this is the last part of the cryosphere to react, it might have the biggest global impact. The main uh, news from the sweeper assessment is that we have found that there is more carbon stored in the ground, for example, than compared to what we knew before. So you can uh, imagine permafrost as a big freezer which stores a lot of organic material. And when it starts to thaw, this will be decomposed and will then be emitted as greenhouse gases, uh, partly as carbon dioxide, but also as methane. And methane is a very strong greenhouse gas. Another effect is that the thawing of permafrost leads to changes in river ice and the lake ice systems. All sources of fresh water entering the Arctic Ocean are increasing. River discharge, rain, snow and melting glaciers, ice caps and the Greenland ice sheet. An extra 7,700 cubic kilometers of fresh water equivalent to one meter of water over the entire land surface of Australia, have been added to the Arctic Ocean in recent years. There is a risk that this could alter large-scale ocean currents that cool down the lower latitudes and hence affect climate on a global scale. This is just one effect among others in a series of changes suspected to impact the climate as humans continue to push the balance. The Arctic is the, the canary in the coal mine in a sense, so the, the Arctic is serving as the, the bellwether of changes that can be expected in other areas. They're giving us the, the opportunity to, 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 to plan, to respond, to adapt, and perhaps to mitigate over the, the time frame of the, uh, the, uh, the next decade. As a result of all the new knowledge compiled by the Sweeper project, we have to change our predictions regarding the impacts from the Arctic on the future climate. The Sweeper project has generated a deeper understanding of the interaction of the components of the Arctic cryosphere, leading us to believe acceleration of warming is a potential possibility. With the observations we have now and taking into consideration the increased warming in the future, we can expect new scenarios in a series of fields. Increased warming over the Arctic, 3 to 7 degrees by year 2100, sea level rise somewhere from 90 centimetres up to 1.6 metres by 2100, loss of summer sea ice within 30 to 40 years, the risk of the Arctic becoming a substantial contributor to GHG balance and more abrupt changes rather than smooth transitions. We, we more and more learn that uh, instead of gradual changes, we see extreme events that are incredibly important, uh, but we also see that some of the gradual changes are not gradual, they're happening much faster. And the, during the Arctic Climate Impact Assessment during 2005, we were criticised that we overestimated some of the changes, and embarrassingly, we underestimated them, we did not overestimate them. So some of the changes have taken us by surprise. Other changes we hadn't really thought about in the Arctic Climate Impact Assessment, but now we're seeing them happen. This is what we're able to conclude. But where do these facts leave us? What kind of message can be extracted from these conclusions? The message to the political establishment should be that in the Arctic, changes are occurring. By acting now, knowing the changes are coming based on what's already happening in the high latitudes, we can shape the course of the climate trajectory in middle latitudes and lower latitudes. So the, the opportunity is there to act now. The window is open, but it's a window that's not going to be open forever. We, we do need to, to heed the warning in, 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 a, in a timely manner, and that timely manner is, uh, is fairly short. You can give a talk about the changing Arctic now and only show examples. You don't have to talk in generalities. You don't have to talk about theories. You can just say, look at the sea ice, look at the changing landscape, 
look at the changing glaciers. This is what a warming planet looks like.